my brothers and sisters, I, I'm sitting here actually in tears, um, and I want to share some a testimony from Gavin Ferguson. You know, and this brought home reality um, this morning. I, I, I was late last night, um, half past three uh, this morning, um, dealing with things that were, were coming, that needed to be dealt with. I, I'm not going into that. But when I opened up Discord this morning, which is the server we work on, immense work goes in there, uh, Gavin had sent me this and to share, you know, and... It struck a note. I, I just want to watch this first. Just, just let's see this. Right. Because my memory is crap, I uh, typed up my uh, testimony. So if it looks like I'm reading, it's because I am. Again, it's because of my memory. The Friday before Labor Day weekend, of 2016, I was in a near fatal car accident when I pulled up from a semi-grain truck. It put me, it put me in a coma for seven weeks and there was a 90% chance of me not emerging. I believed that I had died on impact. I mean, how does a fragile human survive an impact from a grain truck that was overloaded and already weighed 40 tons? Traveling at 55 miles an hour. I don't believe that I did. I also believe that I saw God, and he wasn't going to let me die. I don't remember much from my time in a coma. Just that it was dark, and... I was a passenger in an old pickup truck. I think Jesus was the was the truck. But I think Jesus was the driver. And then I remember hanging on a cliff with the river at the bottom. I don't know how I got there. It's all jumped. But I was helped up by Jesus. And he whispered in my ear the word soon. And then he pushed me. I emerged in Dyersburg Manor. And yeah, I'm, I'm aware that it's a nursing home. My insurance sucked. But they did start my much needed physical therapy. After that, I bounced to Gang Creek, and then back at the Dodgeburg Manor. I believe that I was there for like three weeks. Again, my insurance sucked, and so that I guess that's all they would pay for. But it took me three and a half weeks, or three and a half years to learn to walk again but I thought God was with me the whole time after going back to the nursing home I got moved into a group home for a couple of years And my dad just set up the basement as a therapy room. That's where I focus my time on walking again. It was equipped with a weight bench and some parallel bars. So I was allowed, I 
was able to be to build my muscle back up while learning or practicing to walk again. I believe I was there for a year and a half before I was able to start to walk on my own again. But I still need a walker. It's 2020 and I still need a walker because my balance isn't too great. We, we rewind a little bit. I remember asking the Lord before I graduated high school to reveal himself to me so that I would believe in him 100% when that time comes. Basically, uh, I tested God. One of the things the Bible tells you not never to do. And I did because I'm stubborn. And I also told him that I trusted him to do what it took to convince me. And he did. That was between 2005 and 2009. It's now 2020, and I'm the best. I'm in the best shape of my life, and my relationship with the Lord has never been stronger. He answered my prayer, and the results. Tell me all I need to know about how God was with me throughout my recovery. Not to mention the seven week coma. God's number seven. Seven week coma told me everything I need to know. I know God has been with me my entire life. And he's been working through my dad because he has helped me so much throughout every struggle. He works through all dads. And before I continue, there are two types of dads. There's the standard baby daddy, which is the lowest level. No. The dad that leaves his mom and cheats them. That type of dad. And there are the ones that actually take care of their kids. And there is last mentioned, but definitely not the least. There is the Father, who is God. God is the only one worthy of the title. I know most of us refer to him as the Heavenly Father. And every father is just that. Every father on earth is just that. But a father. But Matthew 23, 9 says, and Do not call anyone on earth father, for you have one father, and he is in heaven. I didn't continue writing. That's my testimony. I hope you enjoyed it. Also, my name is Garvin Ferguson. And I live in Tennessee. And 
I know my voice is kind of raspy, but that is because I suffered from a, a brain injury in that accident, and it just made me kind of sound kind of slow, but I'm not. Just want to throw that in there. Well, first, firstly, I, I just say thank you to Gavin because it it struck home my light and momentary troubles. It put into perspective how the Lord is supreme commander and in charge of whatever circumstance we're going through. You know, I've been blessed that I've never had to go through trials like that to test or whatever my faith in Jesus. I, I just praise the Lord that uh, he protects us and guides most of us. And I, I'm just so amazed that Gavin has come out on, on the Lord's side, that that moment where the enemy tried to snatch his life was foiled. It, it, it wasn't to happen. Now Gavin will spend eternity in heaven in perfect health, in a new resurrected body, the fullness of Christ forever and ever. When we've stood with Christ for 10,000 years, will be no nearer the end than the beginning. It is vast and immense. I, I hope that it did does to you what it did to me. It struck a note and it humbled me. Humbled me. Brothers and sisters, thanks for watching. God bless you.